Back in 1959, there was a movie produced starring Robert Taylor. He played the part of a lawman, and the movie was called The Hangman. He went after a band of cutthroat murderers and uh, bank robbers to bring them to the gallows. Well, he was successful, uh, so successful that he ended up uh, marrying the girlfriend of one of the uh, one of the bad guys. <laughs> and then they went to California, I think, and settled down, lived happily ever after. <laughs> the Hangman. There have been uh, numerous, numerous books that have uh, been entitled Hangman. There's a book of brain teasers, uh, games, that's called uh, Hangman Style. Uh, there's a book called The Hangman and His Wife. Another one called The Hangman's Daughter. Hmm, that's interesting. But the one that's, uh, I, that, that I found to be very interesting was one called The Hangman's Hold. That's just the title of the book. I have no idea what the book is about, but that's just the title. The Hangman's Hold. And, uh, you know, when you stop to think about it, the hangman has a hold on all of us. We've all got the noose around our neck. Yes, we do. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, it says, The soul who sins shall die. And we are all sinners, aren't we? So we've got the noose around our neck, folks. But I'm going to tell you today how you can get it off and keep it off. So, we all have this noose around our neck. Now, you can see this noose is a, is a double noose because the noose around our neck is a double noose, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But Ezekiel 18, beginning at verse 20, says, The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked person turns away from all his sins that he has committed, and keeps all my statutes, and does what is just and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the transgressions that he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteousness that he has done shall he live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord? And not rather that he should turn from his way and live. That's God's desire, as Ezekiel told us. But we have this two-folded noose. It's our actual sins and the power of sin to keep us sinning. And what can we do about that? We know we sin, and we know that there seems to be something that, that, that uh, within us that, that keeps us from just being perfect. <laughs> and we sin, don't we? Well, in 1 Corinthians 15, let me read a couple verses there for you. In uh, this wonderful chapter, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 56 and 57 say this, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is. See, there is power. There is the power of sin, and that is the law. But Jesus comes along. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In John 8, 36, Jesus makes a wonderful statement of victory. He says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. 
Free, indeed. Free, indeed. You will be free indeed. Now, these are encouraging words for us. Why are they encouraging? They're encouraging because of what it means. If you look at the Greek, you will discover that this word free can mean to liberate or to exempt from liabilities. We are exempt from the liability. Why? Because of anything that we have done? No. Because of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus was shed upon the cross. That's why. Because Jesus took upon himself the penalty for our sins. And he liberates us. He exempts us from the, that power of sin because of his blood. That's why we have to place our complete trust in in him. And there's some things that there's the things that he does for us in this process. One, he frees us from that bondage of sin, that power of sin. Paul sums it up well in 2 Corinthians 3:17. He says, "Now, now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom." Got that? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is Freedom, that's because of what Jesus did upon the cross. He also frees us from the penalty of sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life. <laughs> eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. You've got to grasp that. It's not our own power, because we don't have the power over it. But Jesus does. He's, he took care of it upon the cross for us. Praise God. And then he also frees us from the guilt of sin. In John 8, 36, it says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If the Son sets you free, <laughs> you will be free indeed. I am free from the fear of tomorrow, I'm free from the guilt of the past. Why? Because I've traded my shackles. <laughs> I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last. Hallelujah.